Hello, I'm John Clothier and welcome to my workshop. In today's video, we're going to make some work holding clamps for the CNC machine. So as I said, we're going to make some clamps and there's going to be two different styles of clamp that I'm making in this video. So let's make a start. Let's go over to the laptop and start designing it out in Vectrek. Okay, so I've opened up my VCarve program and I've opened up the spoiler board uh, job that I created in the last episode, which has got all my holes in it. I have also delete, resaved this as a new file, spoiler board clamps. I've deleted all the tool paths and I've let, deleted all the layers apart from the 8mm and the 15mm holes. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to reuse these holes in order to help me create the clamps. So let's just zoom in a little bit first. And what I'm going to do to start with is actually just create myself a new layer. And I'm going to call this guidelines. I'll switch off the 8mm layer for the moment because I don't need that. And I'm going to draw a line, well more of an X, between the center of each of these big circles to form an X in the center, which gives me a, a midpoint. Now as I move my cursor towards the center, you can see the cursor changes. So I know that it is found the center. There you go. And I'm going to move that further down because I want to capture three of these holes. So starting here, one, two, three. So it's going to be here. So we're going to need to create a new X. I did that in a bit of a weird way. Again, it's going to come down through here. So one, two, three, and I want it here again. I'll need to do the same above. So that'll be here. And I'll need to do one more here. And you'll see why in a second. So let's get my scissors and let's get rid of any of the extra ones that I don't need. Any of these. This is probably a little bit pointless, but it does keep it neat and tiny. It does only take a second. Right. So now I'm going to create myself a new layer. And I'm going to call this. 15 mil angle and oops I didn't didn't save I should rename that again 15 mil angle and with that make sure that's selected I'm going to take my tool again and I'm going to from the center to the center to the center 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 and oh, I forgot to do one up here but luckily Vectrix clever enough to be able to know that that's what I want to do and has created it for me. Right, so that should mean I've now got a three by three. So let's now take the holes. In fact, let me switch off the guidelines. I don't need those for the moment. Right, somehow I've ended up managing to move my, um, my guidelines onto the same layer. So let me just deal with that quickly. It's quite easy to deal with. All I need to do is to just select select all the ones that I don't want, holding down the shift, right click, move to layer, and select guidelines. And now they've gone, but I can bring them back whenever I want them. So let's bring the holes back on again. And I'm going to select all of them and make sure I don't have the, um, the clamp selected. And I'm going to do ungroups. And hopefully that should then leave me with my holes on their own layer, but individually, which now means that I can select just these ones. And I can copy those to the angle layer. So when I switch off the holes, I still have them here. Now, this may not be the easiest way to deal with this. Um, I am very new to using this software and I am still learning how it works. However, it does look like it's worked, so at least, well, that's something, I suppose. Right, so now I'm going to group that together into one object. Now, in theory, that object should now be, um, I should be able to create a toolpath from that. So I'm going to just create one quickly, and it's going to be a profile toolpath. Set my depth to 18.1, because I want it to go all the way through. I've selected my quarter inch end mill. Um, I'm not going to do with any tabs at the moment, because this is just a test to see if it works. Click OK and then preview it. 
and you can see that let me just move that around that what that will do is that will create me the bracket that I want okay so let's go back I'll delete that toolpath because that isn't going to be the one I actually use what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my guidelines back on and my holes and I'm going to create a different one so back onto guidelines and let's go we use this corner here already so let's zoom in a bit here I'm going to create a straight one this time so corner to corner so it'll be this one here and I want to go across four one two three four so that'll be from here to here back onto my angles go onto that layer and choose my center points okay let's switch off the guides back to my 15 mil holes and let's select those four copy to the same layer that the bracket is on switch off the holes and now I should better select that and with my shift key select that and group that together and now that gives me the two um, bracket types that I want to create so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to modify the size of the machine of the worksheet because this is still set as my spoiler board size and what I can now do is I can now move these around knowing that as long as they don't cut near to these holes it will be securely mounted and will be safe so let's start by moving this around well I can't fit that in width way so I'm going to need to rotate it and I'm going to do that with the rotate um, where is it rotate selected objects button I can set 90 degrees to rotate it and then I can move it around until I'm nice and away from the mounting point which this one now is I'll click close and now I can select it and do control and C to copy and paste then that gives me a second one and now I'm going to do the same with this guy with the angle bracket so let's just move it down here to start with copy paste gives me a second one which I now need to rotate so I'm going to rotate that by 90 degrees I uh, should have done it the other way really so let's do it another 90 there we go right let's move these around and so that they're making good use of the wood whoops okay so that gives me the four clamps that I want so what I'm going to now do is to do the toolpath for the clamps themselves and for that I'm going to use a profile toolpath so I'm going to select all four profile toolpath cut in depth 18.1 again the same um, tool outside right I'm going to do a separate last path of 0.1 millimeters I'm going to add tabs 10 mil and thickness of 3 mil in 3d tabs click edit tabs right so now I can position my tabs and I'm going to have one at either ends of these I don't think I'll need more than that but we'll see you live and learn as they say um, and I'm going to do the same I'm going to do four on the angle ones but on the outsides because what I'm trying to make sure that I do is to leave the inside face which is here and it could be either of these um, completely clean but actually maybe I should just put in a couple here just to be on the safe side I can remove them of course with a bit of sanding right so that should give me my tabs let's close that I'm now going to do a ramp and a smooth ramp distance of 100 mil is probably too much probably 50 will be fine I'm also going to do a lead and then what I'm going to do is make sure everything's okay yeah there we go right let's crawl that the clamps and let's calculate that we're going to get a warning and then we could hopefully have a look and see how it's going to do so preview and are we going to be okay it all looks like it's going to be okay 
Right, so let's go over to the CNC machine and let's start by cutting these four holes. Well, first of all, we're putting the wood down using masking tape and super glue and then take it from there. Okay, so slight change of idea. Rather than creating the four holes to try and screw the board down, I'm just gonna make life easier for myself and use the super glue masking tape trick. So I've put a whole load of masking tape down on the spoiler board. I've put a whole load of masking tape on the piece of wood. All I'm gonna do now is use my super glue, put some on it and then stick it down. Now you may remember in the spoiler board episode, I created a center line horizontally and vertically across the X and the Y. This is why I've now been able to line this board up with that center line so I know that it's straight. Okay, so that's the work held down. I've got my dust shear on, I've got my 6.35 mil bit in or quarter inch. I've set the Z, uh, X, Y, and Z coordinates for the work to this corner. The speed is set on the router, so all I need to do now is to switch the router on, switch the dust extractor on, upload the job, and click start. Fingers crossed, this goes to plan. Okay, so that's finished. Now all I need to do is to get all this off of the spoiler board. Okay, so back at the bench, now I've got my clamps now, and this is just one of them. I've left the others at the machine. One thing that I didn't think about when I was designing these was that in this corner here would be a radius. So I've just been along with the chisel and just squared it off. I've modified my um, V-Carve program so that actually it puts a, a cutout in there that the bit can get into. So it's a seven mil recess. So that would prevent that problem in the future. But what we need to do now is to make the holders that hold this down to the spoiler board. And what we're gonna be using for that is copper pipe. And I've just got some little offcuts here. And all I was doing was just taking a length like this one here, using my caliper and marking 28 millimeters, and it does not need to be precise. Then taking a pipe cutter, lining that up, and just cutting it. Now what I'm doing is for the straight ones, I've done uh, used two, one in each corner. And for the, for the corner ones, I'll be using three. And all I'm gonna do is just take that and feed it in. I'll take the other two as well. And now that is ready to be used on the spoiler board. So let's go over there and I'll show you what I mean. Right, so here you can see my clamps and I've got the straight ones. And in fact, I've got all four of them over here. So I wanna put a piece of wood in like this and hold it is that I can position this clamp and lock it into position and now I can push that into there and that's going to hold it firm from that corner of course if I just put this one in that side that doesn't hold it so I'm going to need to find some way of clamping it from the other two directions to hold it there but what I can do because I've got multiples of these is I could put that one there and have it clamped that way and in fact, because of the way that I've cut these, to making sure it's exactly half, move that out of the way a second, I can put this in like that and they will just join up, which means that I can put that one in there and it's always going to fit. So what I might also want to do is to extend that out. So that's why I have just a straight piece, get in there. And now I can see I've got a much longer piece well, see, that's not a very straight piece of wood, but you get the idea, that's better. And that holds it. So now I need to find a way of doing it from this side, like I said. Okay, so back to the laptop and I've opened up VCarve. Now I've already created and tested this clamp, which is why you can see it here. Um, but I'm gonna use this as a reference and I will show you how I created it. So I've set my worksheet size, my material size to be the size of the wood that is already in the CNC and it's already held in position. And I won't use this area because this is where I cut the one from. Um, so anyway, let's make a start. So to start with, I'm going to create this eight millimeter um, hole. So I'm going to create eight millimeters. And I'll just put that there for the moment. I'm going to create two 6.35 millimeter holes. And the reason for that is that is the size of the bit that I'm using. And it will just save on time by either creating 
uh, by either using a different size tool bit, a, a smaller one, um, or by creating any bigger. Now, the bolts that are going to be going through are 6 mil. Okay, so there is my three holes. So let's start. I move this one down here. I'm going to take my 6 mil and produce it, bring it here, and the other one and bring it here. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to center align all three of those. So I've drawn around them and I'm aligning them to each other. I'm now going to take a line, let's zoom in a little bit here, from the side of this one down to the side of this one. Then create another line from here down to here. Now, what I should now be able to do is using the scissors, remove those two lines, and now I'm left with a slot. And that slot should be 70 millimeters in length. Now, it doesn't matter if it isn't, because I can select that vector, and using the resize tool, I can see that it's currently set at 72.89. And I want it to be 70. You want to type in 70, make sure the link XY is not selected, because you want the width to stay the same. And we don't mind where it positions to at the moment, but I'll leave it at the center, click apply. Right, so now that will be the same height as this one, and actually it will still be lined to the eight mil here. Now, the next thing is, I should have put a distance in between these two, actually. Let's just put a distance here, 13.4. Now, the measurements don't need to be exact. So let's just create a 13 mil line. I'll do, and I can move this circle up to there. I say it doesn't need to be exact, it's just roughly in the right place. Let's get rid of that line now. Let's drop those two back into alignment because I'm sure I probably moved one. Right, so that is going to be the cutout that the bolt is going to go through that holds the clamp down. And this is a secondary bolt that allows the back end of the clamp to be lifted. But I'm going to have a threaded insert in this one, which is why it's 8mm. And this one has got a 6mm bolt going through it. So anyway, let's draw the box around the outside. So let's just draw a box. And I'm going to start that. Leave it square. Width is 40mm here. And the height, although it says 132.313, it doesn't need to be. 132 would work fine. And I should but I just click... Oh, I've done the right, it's around the wrong way. My mistake. So that should be 40 and 132. There we go. Um, I am still learning this program. I am still fairly new to it. So please do forgive me. Um, I'm by nowhere trying to produce or claim that I am an expert at this um, or even to show you the best way to do it. This is just simply me as a beginner to the CNC finding my way along. So I've selected the three of those now. And again, just align them to themselves, and that now gives us the main clamp. So I'm going to group that together, group that object. You see I've now got that one solid object. Now, where I'm going to get slightly clever with this is this section at the top. Now, these are going to be different sized recesses. You see, this is what we're looking to create, this stepped section. So back to the 2D view. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another rectangle. And that rectangle is going to be 50 millimeters wide and it's going to be 10 millimeters deep. So 50 by 10. Now, the reason for making it 50 and wider is so that we don't end up with a radius on these corners. It ends up completely flat. So I'm just going to drop it in for the moment. It doesn't really matter where it is. I'm now going to create another one. And you see, I've set this 8.449. Again, it doesn't need to be 8.449. I'm not quite sure why it's measured it that way. Um, it, it, 10 is, or 9 would, something like that would be absolutely fine. So let's just set it to 9 and click close. In fact, I think that might have just changed the first one. Let's just highlight that again. Resize. Uh, yes, it did. So that one does need to be 10 millimeters. Right. So now, once again, let's take these three so these three objects and we're going to center align them now with the first one the slightly bigger one 
we're going to line that up with the top there we go lined up with the top of the where the bar is going to be cut or the material is going to be cut and this one we're going to come about halfway down now it should be about five millimeters in so i probably need to set myself a line for that let's draw it from here five okay so i've given myself a little line to go from select this drag it down okay that's a five millimeter line let's get rid of that little line because we don't need it and it will just cause us a problem and i should have done this really at the end so i'm going to have to do it again center a line right now what i'm going to do now is with the tool paths is i will cut out the two squares here separately before cutting the clamp out and that will allow me to set different heights so let me show you what i mean but first of all let me just move this over because i don't want to waste the material and i'm going to create a copy of that and move it along and another one And I might be able to get one more in here. So that gives me five. And I may as well cut another couple because these are going to come in useful. Let's drop one up there. One in there and one up there. So that will give me eight in total. Right, so as I said, let's get on with the, the tool paths now. But let me just switch off those dimensions because they're getting in the way. And this one, I'm going to move this one to one side because, again, I don't want that one to be cut. Um, and it's just going to get in the way for the moment. So let's just move it off the side. But we know that that space is missing from the work anyway. Right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to select the shallowest part that's going to be cut out so that's this bottom square and using the shift key i'm going to select all of the all of those and i should say this material is 18 millimeters deep so dividing that by three is six so i'm going to create myself a cut depth of six select my six mil um cutter passes i'm fine with um i'm going to change the ramp don't need to change it too much. I'm going to save it to let's change it to 10 millimeters, and we'll call that the six mil cut, and calculate that. Let's just reset the preview. Right, so you can see that that's going to make that cut out. So back to the 2D view. Now we're going to select the other boxes again. Hold down the shift, create another new pocket tool path. This time with a depth of 12. Everything else can stay the same. I'm going to call this 12 mil cut. Calculate. And let's preview that. And now you can see it's created the second step down. And that's how we're getting our two different steps. If you have a spire rather than a V-carve, you could create this as a model, a 3D model. But I don't believe it's possible to do it in V-carve without doing the method that I have done. If you know differently, please do let me know. So now I'm going to select the rest of it. So this is the bit that we haven't done yet. And this time we are going to create a profile toolpath. Again, I'm going to set it to cut all the way through this time. So I've set it to 18.2. And my end mill is set. I'm going to um, I'm going to add tabs. Um, mostly because my board is only stuck down in a couple of places and I don't want this thing to get away from itself. I'm going to add a spiral toolpath uh, ramp. I don't need a lead for this. So, but let's go, actually, first of all, let me just rename that to the clamp outline and let's edit the tabs. And I will want, let's just go back, sorry. I will want these to be 3D tabs, so it's up and down. Thickness is three millimeters is fine. I could probably get away with a bit less than that. Probably go for two. Uh, length doesn't need to be quite that. Let's go for eight mil. It's just going to reduce the amount of sanding that I have to do. So let's edit the tabs and let's click on where I want to put them. Now, where I want to stay clear of is this top section. So I'm going to put a couple on either side. 
just to hold them in place and I can sand that off later. Not the most lined up tabs in the world, but it really doesn't matter. Oops, missed one. Okay, so each one has got four. Let's close that and calculate. It's going to warn me that I'm cutting through the material, which is fine. So let's do a final reset the preview and let's preview all the visible ones. And that is what we're going to end up with. You see the tabs and we've got seven to cut out plus I've already got one that's been made. So let's save the toolpath and upload it to the machine and uh, set it running. Right, so back at the bench and I've given these a little bit of a sand and taken off the 3D tabs. So I'm going to put the others to one side for a second. Let's just show you what, how I'm going to construct these. So to start with, for the 8mm hole, I'm going to use the same um, threaded inserts that I used to do my spoiler board. And just using the drill and a hex bit, I'm just going to attach that to the bottom. And I've done an in and out on it, um, just so that it, it goes in a little bit easier. And I've tried to make it as flush as possible. And it is on the non cut out side. Not that that really makes a difference. What I'm then gonna do is I've got this whole different assortment of different size bolts here. And they're all M6. And I've got these small ones here, which have got a very flat head on it. And the point of those is that they will screw up from the bottom. And of course that's adjustable, which gives me a height for it that side. Um, and I can screw them all the way in as well. So let's put that one all the way in for the moment. And you don't have to worry about Allen keys or anything, just finger tight will be absolutely fine, I am sure. Now for the other side, I've got these different lengths of M6 bolt, and these are going to screw down into the spoiler board. So depending on how high the wood is, depends on which one of these bolts that I want to use. Um, I suspect that I might even end up having to use some of these bigger ones at some point, but for now, let's just use this size. Now I'm gonna put it through quite a large washer, and that's because it's gonna go in through here, and I wanna make sure it's got plenty of support for when it comes out the other side. So anyway, I'll get these made up, and let's go over to the work bee, and I'll show you how I plan to use them. So I'm going to show you the whole thing about what I've set up here. Now these clamps serve two purposes. The first purpose is that when you put them in, you can use your piece of wood, or use them as a clamp I should say, for your piece of wood, push it up against there and you've got ready-made hold. That's not going to move in that direction. The other thing that's really useful for these is because of the way that these have been cut, they're absolutely straight. So if I've got something like this, which is like a fingerboard for a guitar, I can put it in here. Now, I'm not gonna be able to easily attach that with a clamp, so what I'm gonna use is the super glue and masking tape trick. Whenever we set our jobs up in our software, we always have the workpiece square. Now, whether it's square that way or that way doesn't really matter, it's always square. With this, what I know I can do is I can run my masking tape all the way down that side and right up against here, position it in, hold it down, and that's going to be absolutely square. And then I can use this corner, or this, or this corner, doesn't really matter, to set my zero, and then I'm good to go. Now, as I said, you can use, we can use this for all kinds of different sizes, bits of wood. So like this piece here, it's just a piece of OSB. Again, I can hold that in the corner, but I need to hold it from this side. And that's where these come into play. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our clamp and we can screw that into any of the holes that we've got lying around that we created before when we did the spoiler board. And I can put the end over the workpiece and I can use an Allen key. I can just tighten that up and lock it down. Now the observant view will notice I've got bigger washers on here than I had before. That's because I couldn't find these ones when I was filming. And as soon as I came over here, I found them. So now that is locked on there solid and that isn't going anywhere. That isn't going anywhere. 
but we can put them on from the other side as well. So just to be on the safe side. And the reason why the gap or the slot is the size that it is, is that I have purposely made it so that it doesn't matter where the workpiece is or how big I should say the workpiece is, there will always be a slot that it will fit onto, a, a socket that it will fit onto. And there we go. So that is our workpiece, absolutely secured. It's not going anywhere. Now, one of the other things that we could do is we can take the bolt out and flip it around to the other side. So if we're going back to our fingerboard, which is a bit small for the, for the clamp in that way, we can turn it around the other way and let's slot it into here. And we can push it up against the fingerboard, press it up as hard as I can, lock it down. And again, that's not going anywhere. Now I'd probably want to consider putting one up the other side and maybe another one here, but this is why I've created a whole array of them because it means I've got all sorts of different options for mounting it. To be fair, I've mounted it, this is too far this way, but because I have got this adjustable bracket that I can move that way, it's all good. Now let me just loosen this one off again and there's one more trick up its sleeve. Now if I've got something a bit bigger like this, I can once again put it into the corner and I know that that's gonna hold it in that direction, but I wanna hold it with the clamps again. So what I'm gonna be able to do this time is I'm gonna take a slightly longer bolt from both sides, screw a longer bolt in and the same the other side. There we go, and we have got a clamp that's raised. I might need to get some longer bolts. This one's a bit on the short side, actually. But we have got a clamp that's held a bit higher because the bolt at the back allows us to raise up the other side of it, so it's not at a funny angle. It's relatively straight. As I said, I could do with a, I could do with a longer, longer bolt there, for sure. Um, but yeah, that secures it in place. So thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful. Um, I'd be interested to hear your comments on the clamps. If you've got any opinions on how I could have done things better or how I could have improved on it, then please do let me know in the comments below. This is the first time of me creating anything like this. It's still all very new to me, the CNC. So there will be some mistakes, I am sure. But I hope you've enjoyed it. If you are new here, I do invite you to hit that subscribe button. There will be more of this kind of thing coming up. And I will be getting back to the guitars very, very soon. And hey, there might even be some wood turning as well. You never know. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.